Hello, this is Adrian Igo, Capricorn Tigress of Astrology, A Look Inside, and I'm just making videos now, and I, I'm just going to be making a couple of videos um, just so that I constantly can get in front of you guys and you can hear what I have to say and some of my thought processes. But, you know, I've been going through quite a bit uh, over this past, I would say, last three to four months. It's been... Uh, wow, it's been amazing. It's been eye-opening because it's changed me as a person. But one of the most amazing things occurred, and that was that I found a series of uh, childhood photos, pictures of me. Um, <sighs> this is such a hard conversation. Um, and I just realized I don't have my, my lucky amethyst right next to me. Here it is. I feel like I need to hold it right now. So anyway, I found a series of childhood photos. I, I might I might share a photo. I might. I I might. I, I don't know if I will. So um, one of the things that happened to me over the past um, week or so, I would say the last couple of weeks, was... I had made these um, affirmations, and they're not necessarily mine. Some are, some aren't. And um, I just thought they were great words of wisdom from various people that I've seen. And so I I um, made a, I thought was like a astrology, a look inside series of great words of wisdom from various, I don't know where the words are. They're all quotes from all over the place. And... Um, and of course I post the quotes and then I put my picture there because well it's me and I'm the one who's sharing it and so I figured I would like to do that because I have a million pictures of myself and why not share them it's part of my obsession actually so anyway I had did that and this guy posted something to the effect that oh you're a very beautiful woman but why do you have to put your face in the marquee or something to that effect and I wrote him back something similar to this I love myself I love everything about me I love the way I look I love the way I think I love the way I feel I love every bit about me and I like displaying myself and therefore I did simple right we are here to do what makes us feel good. I felt instinctively when he was talking that to do it otherwise would not make me feel good. And therefore, what would be the purpose of doing it? Let's see. Now, I have to watch myself because I have to make sure I'm not getting too dark in my thoughts or too black and white because that is I have Scorpio on the 10th house cusp and I'm a double Capricorn and so darkness darkness I also have Pluto on my ascendant and Pluto is in trying a grand trying actually matter of fact they're all trying everything uh, darkness I think I fight that because I believe I'm supposed to be, uh, I don't know, some kind of Saturnian responsible person. And I don't know how, how responsible I am, but I try my best. Anyway, I don't even know why I first started the conversation except to share that I had found these horrifying pictures of myself when I was a young child. And I realized that a lot of the pain that I experienced and go through and a lot of the trauma that I go through is because I went through life as a very plain, ugly person. And somewhere inside of me, I am still battling no matter what people see on the outside. That mindset 
that I am a very plain, ugly person. I don't even know if I was actually ugly. I just like a boy. I look, look like Porky Pig. I had a little round face, little round nose, hair shorn off like a boy. Look like Porky Pig. Little round lips. It's cute in its own little Porky Pig way. But we all grow up and things change. But that image brought back a thousand memories of pain. And I realized that it is part of what shapes who I am today. Um, and this is something, it's, 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 uh, it's a little painful for me to even go into. <laughs> You guys don't even know. I might be sitting here looking fairly calm, but right now I'm like, ah! I mean, I've got Saturn sitting on my sun, right? I've got Pluto sitting on my ascendant, right? I was born with Saturn in the first house. It is my chart ruler. And I'm wearing all black because this was a black day. I got my garnet going. You know, it's that time of life. Uh, you know. It's I'm dealing with it as best as I can, but I want to chronicle everything. I want to chronicle the feelings. I want to chronicle the thoughts. I want to chronicle the the fears, the anger anguish, you know, whatever, the memories. I want to chronicle it because I know I'm having life epiphanies. I've said this in several of my videos, but I know that I'm experiencing something deep. I can't explain why or what it is, why I'm experiencing it, or why I feel the need to record it. Oh, I did figure out that. I've got Vega on my son. I never knew that. Well, I think I might have read it. I just never knew the importance of it. I made a video about it for uh, in January caps on YouTube. I talk about Vega there. But there was one of those things that Vega said that freaked me out so much about, um, you know, just about the, the whole image thing and... Uh, wow, just everything that I'm doing right now is so faded that I'm having a hard time talking about it because it might be one of those things I have to type out and, you know, because you might have to erase it and go back over and, and think it over and, and make sure you're typing out the right thing so it might be more of a blog post. But I just wanted to come and share that strange vibe, that feeling that a person has when Saturn is sitting on their sun and it seems as though the world has slowed down to such a pace of stillness and you're faced with only the reality of your mortality and your place in this world and what you are here to accomplish or not accomplish what dreams you're pursuing or not pursuing it's been difficult because i'm in the process of retraining my mind retraining one's mind Retraining one's mind into believing in their highest good. Like, that's hard. That's hard. Because most of us get stuck in a mire. We all do. It's part of it. And so I'm, I, every once in a while I get this feeling like I'm going to transcend over the mire. And then I sink back into it again. And then I'm like, oh, I'm about to transcend over the mire. And I find myself back in it again. But 
I really feel. I'm transcending over the mire, even now. It's this weird It's this weird feeling of inner knowing. I can see where I'm going wrong. I can see where I'm going right. And so I you know, this is kind of a weird feeling because that's for most of us who have whatever this is. We can see it for others more clearly. It's very rare to see it for ourselves. It's almost impossible. I've heard many um, empaths and psychics and tarot readers and astrologers and uh, it's hard, right? We get stuck in our mire. But I've got this weird thing happening. It's like an awakening. My chart is freaky. That's why I, I thought maybe a vlog would be easier if you saw it, but it's amazing. I've got, um, of course, my son, uh, uh, you know, on the Ascendant, I think I've talked about that. By birth, it was, you know, it's the 12th house. And there's a huge stellium of Capricorn planets that are transiting that 12th. And now I'm going into the first house. You know, they're all going into the first Pluto's on me, my ascendant in the first. And um, Saturn sitting on my sun by a few degrees, aspecting the ascendant as well. But there's so many other things there. And I read that, and I'll find it. At least I'll share that. So I'm kind of rambling here, but it's because there's so much information. It's just, it's hard to understand how to do this. I had so many things I wanted to talk about. That was the law of manifestation. I'm going to be talking about that too, but that's not what I want to talk about now. I want to talk about this situation I wrote about. Okay, here we are. Astrology stuff. I'm almost positive I put it here 2019 yes I try to keep myself organized otherwise my mind you know I have a site also if ever you get bored it's called neverquitmind.com neverquitmind.com neverquitmind your mind dot com go there the first thing that will hit you is an I <laughs> it's amazing now <clears throat> okay so I'm going to talk about a couple of things that I had found uh, about the solar return uh, because you know solar returns are important one of the things I found bef uh, while I was studying was that solar re returns actually begin to take effect three months prior to the actual date. And they set into place no later than three months after the return date. Which I said April, right. That's when Uranus goes retrograde, or goes direct again. Maybe January, February, March. Could be March and not April. But, you know, my whole situation where I feel like my life change happened at the very end of October. Almost exactly three months. It's amazing. So pay attention. It starts about three months prior to the solar return. And if you pay attention to that, you can get an idea or vibe for what that solar return is going to be bringing into your life. Ah, in my case, I guess it's extreme wisdom and extreme compassion and extreme courage and extreme everything because I had to pick myself up off the floor and start again. Uh, and I'm not even sure if I've actually started again. 
I just know I'm in the process of starting again. And that's important. Now, what is eerie for me is that I found that when there is a great deal of emphasis around the 12th or the 1st house or the 6th house, there can be some emphasis on serious diseases. So when the sun of a solar return falls in the first six or twelve house, even though good placements could help with recovery of the disease, it indicates diseases. And I found out right before my marriage ended, well, a couple of really horrible things happened, but the thing I found out is I can no longer eat certain foods because of a whatever that's going on. And um, it's going to most likely change my life. Because no matter how much I eat, I don't think I'll ever be able to maintain obesity in the traditional sense of the word of obesity because well how will I do that <laughs> can't have flour can't have milk or cheese or just things like pizza and stuff and I'm even having trouble with tomatoes now and, uh, I found out though something you know that I have my son in the 12th house by birth but with Saturn transiting there I've been more of a homebody more than ever and with Saturn on my son in the 12th house it does indicate that I am reclusive I feel like I've been more reclusive this year than ever before um, it also indicates that I'm super introverted and married to my home I am married to my home I'm home aren't I I I've had someone in, uh, ask me if I would go fly out somewhere or whatever and I thought uh, well maybe if you fly in to meet me first I'm just not adventurous enough especially at this time of my life to just go out and fly and meet someone that's so not Saturn in the 12th house <laughs> like that's just not gonna happen also I well this thank God I don't have this I I personally don't have this but Someone out there, I, I'm feeling compelled to share that if you have Mars in the 12th, 6th, or 1st house of a solar return, it can ruin the whole year. So be cautious and check and make sure you don't have Mars there because that is not a harbinger of good news. So also, I wanted to state that it's important not to have surgery around solar returns. Uh, don't have important examinations around your solar return and don't have surgical operations or examinations 20 days before or after your birthday. And that goes, you know, let everybody you care about know that as well, that it's just not a good idea. Now, finally, I just wanted to say about this one. Well, there's two more things I'm going to mention. One is that if the rising sign or a stellium of three or more planets or the sun of a solar return fall in the first house, the sixth house, or twelfth house. The year will probably be a difficult year. It could be ruinous, could be dangerous, and it could be negative all around. And it's not good for health or for work. And it's not good for affections. And I have all of that. My rising sign has, a, has Pluto on it, Capricorn. Three or more planets. My personal sun, solar return sun, Saturn, Mercury, Vega, all of it <laughs> happened right there in my 12th house. Look, last year was so damn bad. I, you know, yeah, I'm probably getting divorced this year. It's expected. Whatever. It's not going to be, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be bad. I mean, it's already bad. So, unless this is just a precursor 
and my new year started on around the 26th to 28th of October. That could be it. And so I just got a taste of how horrific it's all going to be until whatever the F this is stops. So that could be it. And therefore, I'm grateful that I recorded my hypnosis sessions so I can go into hypnosis at will. But the other thing I do want to mention, and it isn't good either, is having Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto in the first six or twelfth house of a solar return, it's, well, it's best to avoid this when and if possible. They actually recommended getting up and moving. <laughs> Like, move, go. Like, it's that bad. It can lead to long-term negative events. And I have both Pluto and Saturn in my first and twelve houses. I think that if I look at it that way, that um, maybe October 28th or 26th, I think it was, it was just a precursor. It was the, you know, the precursor of the year. It was to let me know how this is going to be set up. Now, I don't necessarily believe this, really. I'm going to put other things into the universe right after I make this video. I'm going to put it into the, in the universe right now on the video so I can hear it during the video whenever it plays. So I'm going to say right now that all of the negative things that I've just said can be negated. I think being aware of it helps to negate part of the negativity. I think what happens is we have most of our negative experiences astrologically when we either don't pay attention to what is there or we don't know and, and we, you, we find out too late what's there. But now that I know that this is what this potential means, having such heavy duty planets on my ascendant and around my ascendant in my 12th house, I already knew it was going to be hard. I didn't know it was going to be this difficult. But now I can prepare for it. And I can study it and, and do all the weird doohickey things I do when I know that things are going to get a little weird. Now, I just wanted to say this, too, about that crazy Vega. Hmm. January 11th. So that's what it was. Today, January 11th, was um, the moon, the sextile. Oh, the moon in Pisces was... Anyway, the moon sextile in Pisces. What did I type here? A square Jupiter. I think I meant to say Pisces is... The, you know, the moon in Pisces is square Jupiter. Hmm. And Venus went into Sag on the 8th. Just looking at that. And definitely the sun is in my first house right now. Oh, let's see here. So, I was just going to give a little bit about this Vega. Hmm. Well, just the whole thing here. Hmm. I'm so concerned. It keeps saying about working in integrity. And I've spent so much time on my astrology business that I let so many other things go to the wayside. I've got a few uh, videos up now about Get Me a Real Career. And I do want to put more emphasis on getting Get Me a Real Career to just be automated with uh, affiliates and, and, you know, maybe some salespeople that do things. Um, but right now, and I've not done anything really I've made a few webinars and gearing up and opened up some things there but I just wanted to kind of go over some notes I took I don't know when exactly but I think it was for the 
Capricorn reading and I thought maybe I will go over this. Maybe it'll mean something different now that we've passed it right. But it's a sense the solar eclipse is conjunct Saturn. It's giving off a serious vibe. And that again, like I said, I felt like um, the whole thing even with my marriage was a precursor of this year. Now that I think about it, it was the opener. It was like the opening number. And Saturn is giving off a very serious vibe. Um, you know, it's probably making me a little serious. I can't help it. It's funny, on Facebook I had found some pictures of me just about four years ago, I guess. Before I got married and before I fell in love with this horrible person. And um, he's not horrible, but he was always a little bit Saturnian. I always saw it. I laughed at it. I thought it was funny. What I didn't know was that that is catchy. <laughs> but these pe this, these pictures of me, I wish I, I, I wish I could just throw up the picture so you can see. You could just see the innocence in my face. I mean, I'm in my 50s, and I might even look like I'm in my 50s now because I've aged so insanely much in just a few years time but um, in these pictures I, I just look like a child almost just the innocence and the Pollyanna beauty of that innocence is apparent in almost every picture I feel like if anything that if not the man himself but the universe itself conspired to take that innocence away because if I can be duped and betrayed by the person I put all my trust in to the point that I could have been in danger, I could have endangered my life by entrusting someone more than I entrusted myself. I love that person more than I loved myself. But that person didn't love me at all. And so it's important that we understand that the lessons we're getting like it's yeah some of these lessons are painful yeah they are but the lessons are making us so wise like some people you know some are like oh are you bitter i think a part of me wants to be bitter but i can't be bitter because I see the universal pattern and how it was created to protect me in its own way. So Saturn is giving off a very serious vibe. Saturn is like the great father. If you can think of Saturn as like a taskmaster or a father, that's the way I think of Saturn. He's a stern dad. Just like a stern dad would take away your cell phone and put you in your room and pull out your computer and cable access because you screwed up and now you're on timeout. Right? That's Saturn. You screwed up. Now you're on timeout. And that's what I'm going through. Now it's a little heavy. I feel it. I feel heavy as a person. Even though I know I can't possibly be. I don't know. I could. It's Saturn on my sun, right? But I, I can't eat bread or things like that anymore. So I'm sure weight loss has got to be coming. I mean, it's, it's inevitable. But it feels so heavy. It's a little heavy. And it's conservative. Okay? But, you know, with Neptune hanging around trining or, or excuse me sextiling Saturn it, it there's some glamour and creativity going on right now as well and I feel that I feel that I mean look how dewy my skin is I'm not saying that to be egotistical please don't think of me that way I'm saying it because I'm in my 50s and look at my skin it's ridiculous and that is Neptune that is glamour 
and creativity. That is what's going on right now. But I'm also aware of my age. And I'm aware of my aging. And when I saw those pictures of me just four years ago, I saw how deeply I've aged. It's insane when you look at it. Well, first of all, I was too damn young. I mean, I am a double Capricorn and I'm in my 50s. You can't look 20 when your child is in her 30s. God, how it must make her feel. So, I'm, in a way, I'm glad now that I'm looking older. I'm wearing makeup more and, you know, becoming whoever I'm becoming. But as long as you work with integrity, Saturn um, is going to help create a very successful career or business venture, I think. I was really working hard on that career and business around my birthday because I knew that, well, it's Capricorn and there was just an inherent desire to work on my businesses. So when the sun conjuncts the moon, because the sun was conjuncting the moon on my solar return, it's a powerful time in the heavens because it, it starts new and improved things. It's a good time to keep a journal and write things out. My dreams and my goals and my plans. And I have been doing that. I mean, when I say I've been doing that, I mean, I've been doing that. Like I made a, a video last night, and I mean down to the final detail, I've been doing that. Down to the final detail, I've been planning my food list. Just every blessed plan and detail just amazing. Now, I thought I would share that because I don't usually plan in detail anything. <laughs> I've got Neptune on the 10th house cusp. Right on my midheaven. Sextile my sun. Opposing my moon. Sextile my Pluto. And trying my crazy Jupiter and Pisces. I always just went by feeling. I was very lucky I landed on my feet. But that's because I'm a Capricorn. We always do. But now it's different. I went to build and grow. And I don't want to just play and jump as the little goats do. I put something on my page on my blog about the jumping goats and how playful they are but now it's different we're, we're you know we're, I'm getting older as many caps are are becoming aware that they are and I feel like um, that planning that goal oriented planning and dreaming and envisioning, manifesting our desires. That's that's what we're doing. Okay, We have to see things in a very responsible light and go for it. I notice that I'm wheezing right now, too. <coughs> Excuse me. And I don't know how much of this is me and how much of this is my um, motherly... Um, empathetic thing. My daughter is sick and she was on the phone with me earlier and saying how she needs to get their flu and I think her husband went off to get her some. But um, now I may be sick because my voice is a little rough. It's very raggedy. And uh, it's been like that ever since my birthday. Now we partied pretty good so I thought that was what it was. But, um, yeah, my voice is a little raggedy. So, anyway, that fixed star Vega is at 15 degrees and 33 seconds of Capricorn. And I remember when I learned that Vega was on my sun, it, I, it didn't even phase me. 
but now I know. It's actually a very powerful fixed star. And um, it, it's pretty much right on my son. It's said to be a good omen. And I never thought of myself or anything about me or my life as being a good omen. But it's especially a good omen when it's conjunct the sun and above the horizon. And I have both of these going on. So I swear, I. it may be why there's this inherent ability to keep trying. I keep picking myself up and I keep trying because there's something in me that knows or believes inherently I deserve better and that I can do better and that I can achieve better and that I can achieve more if I believe I can achieve more. And if I put my heart into achieving more, it indicates poetry, which, well, I guess, you know, I like, I write music. It indicates a harmonious personality, charity and kindness, ide idealism, hopefulness and refinement. It can seem a little grave and it's changeable and also, it can be sober, and it can somehow <clears throat> come off as pretentious and lascivious. And I made a big deal of those words in my last video about this. But um, I, you know, yeah, those words, I can see how people would have those words about me. It's artistic, and there's music and acting and love of living the good life is all indicated by this vega. So anyone that has any planet, I would think, anywhere between 14 degrees and 16 degrees of Capricorn, but specifically within a degree of 15, 30, and 15 degrees and 33 seconds of Capricorn, then that is wonderful. You are experiencing something with this Vega. Uh, eccentric artists who live a life of debauchery are also indicated here. <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> I hope I'm not that. Uh, I made a big deal also. They mentioned the back of the right knee. Uh, also the ego. It's associated with that. I've got the last name of Vigo now. Um, and there is some fulfillment via the ego. Um, and that it's often very masculine and prideful. I talked about that. It can make people critical and abrupt and reserved and unpopular even. It can give sporadic honors and acclaim, but it can also give insincere friends. So it's hard, I guess, to trust others when you don't know who to trust. It can indicate public disgrace, probably because of forgery of some kind. And there could be some loss because of the things that you write about, or you can have bad health, or you can have, um, yeah, so those are the bad things. But it also says here that you can have some influence and you can gain through annuities and pensions and you can have some success in business, so it's not bad overall. I mean, there are some extra responsibilities, but you can get honor and acclaim and achievements and recognition and promotion and wisdom and structure. Very, all these very Capricornian pinnacle things, right? That's amazing. And it says people will turn to me for help, and I, that does seem to be the case. I wonder if anyone else out there has any planets in and around 15 degrees of Capricorn, 1533. If you do, let me know if any of these words, any of these things resonate with you on a deeper level. Like if you, maybe your Venus or your moon or your rising is at 1533. In my case, it really is the sun um, in, the, in the 12th house. So anyway, I think I'm going to end with this because I could ramble on and on and on about astrology. There's just so much 
interesting information to talk about when it comes to astrology. I think my next video is that I'm going to talk about the law of attraction because that's something I'm really into right now. I believe that we have the ability to call in the kind of year we want to call in. I was telling me it could be ruinous and all that. Forget that. I'm going with the acclaim and all that. Hell, I've got my son on Vega. So I'm going for the... <laughs> I'm going to go for the positive good things that it can bring and not concentrate on the negativity that is there. And if I concentrate and bring in good and positive things and stay optimistic, then only good and positive things are going to be coming toward me. And that's exactly what I want. Okay. Well, this has been Capricorn Tigress, Adrian Igo of Astrology A Look Inside and I invite you all to come and visit me at astrologyalookinside.com and subscribe to our newsletter and please like, share and subscribe our videos here on YouTube and um, oh, and I give away free mini readings on Facebook um, you can get a mini reading at facebook.com slash groups slash astrology a look inside okay well thanks so much for sitting in with me wow it's been 41 minutes just rambling on here thanks so much for spending time with me this day much love and much light to all namaste <laughs>